Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles. And today we're going to be reviewing the brand new DOS Keyboard 4 Professional. Now, you guys know I love me some DOS Keyboard. I mean, here's one of four of their original keyboards that I own, and I have the blues, browns, and the red switches. But now they've refined the design. We're going to check out what they came up with right now. Oh, that sounds so good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have it, the DOS Keyboard 4 Professional. It's actually a really, really nice box, and looking at the back here, if we flip it around, it says, as German-engineered MX Blue Mechanical Switches, cutting-edge design, premium materials, dedicated media controls, it's got a two-port, super speed, USB 3.0 hugs, 6.6-foot cable, a detachable football or foot bar ruler, which was something I didn't, that, that's kind of a neat idea, and full end key rollover finally, so you don't have to plug it into PS2 to get that end key rollover. So I've been really excited about this keyboard because the DOS keyboard has been my perfect go-to keyboard. I have four of them. I actually have one sitting right here. This is my old one right here, and you can see I did the upgraded red switches and the WASD keys in green. And you can see the thing I liked about the DOS keyboard was simplicity. I mean, the thing is built very, very heavy duty. It's very strong. It's got very nice clicky keys. This is the silent version, so it's not as loud. And it's been a fantastic keyboard. But there were a couple of gripes with it, um, and it looks like they've addressed those gripes with this keyboard. So I'm really, really excited to upgrade. So let's go ahead and open this box up and see what we got. Okay, flipping it open here. Looks like we have a little uh, piece of plastic here. It says DOS keyboard on it. Oh, this is the ruler. So you can see it has all the little numbers and everything on it like a ruler does. And it has a couple of magnets. So I think this magnetizes under the keyboard to give it lift. And it doubles as a ruler, which is nice. I actually use rulers a lot because I do a lot of the 3D printing stuff and I need to measure stuff to send off to uh, my CAD designers. And so it's actually kind of cool to always know that I have a ruler handy. All right, let's go ahead and take out the keyboard here. Man, it's in there good. Go ahead and take off the bubble wrap. Oh, wow. That, that is really cool. All right, so that's pretty simple packaging. I like that. You've got the keyboard, you've got this little insert here that talks about the installation. The little piece of paper says DOS keyboard requires no drivers and won't be installed automatically. That's pretty typical for most keyboards, although with the Cooler Master keyboard, if you wanted the macro functionality, the extended macro functionality, you had to install software for it. But since this keyboard doesn't have macros, that's not necessary. For N key rollover, it says press shift plus mute. The lock LEDs will flash once, three times for on, and, and twice, three times for off. See the bottom label for DOS keyboard. So the N key rollover can be enabled and disabled. Now, I honestly don't know why you would ever disable N key rollover. Is there any advantage to disabling it? So I'm going to do a little bit of uh, research on that. All right, so the first thing I noticed about the keyboard that I did not know is it actually has a metal surface. Much like the Cooler Master keyboard, the entire surface here is aluminum. That's pretty badass. And the keyboard has some good weight to it. It is a very, very heavy keyboard. And over here on the side, you can see it has a volume control, and it is clicky. It's got a clicky kind of feel to it. It's not a smooth volume knob, so it moves in increments. And you have your sleep button, you have your audio mute button, track forward, track backwards, play and pause. So your media keys are separate. Another cool thing is, it looks like they got rid of the function key. So no more having to do the function F key stuff. You literally just got a Windows key. Now the Windows key is interesting because they didn't actually use a Windows key. It's some emblem I've never seen before, but that's because they probably wanted to make the keyboard agnostic to all different operating systems. Now if we flip the keyboard over here, this little uh, thing is supposed to raise it up, I believe. Yep, the, that, that's actually cool. It just magnetizes in place like that. So when you flip the keyboard around, it gives it a raise. So the keyboard's at a little bit of an upward angle. Mo you, most keyboards, you have to flip feet out to get it to angle up. This actually uses this clever little tactic. And then you can, of course, pull it off and actually use it as a ruler. The neat thing is the magnets are actually buried under the plastic, and they're not exposed in any way, so they're not going to get any dirt or anything collecting on them or little metal fragments that are hard to clean off. You just literally line that up, pop it on there, and you're good to go. Now, this keyboard has a very heavy-duty USB cable. This thing is very, uh, very thick, and I'm thinking that's because of the USB 3.0. Um, and a really cool thing, this was what I was super excited about, is it's got two USB 3 ports on it, but not just that, they put them at the top of the keyboard, so they're perfect for plugging mice and USB thumb drives and stuff into, and they won't obstruct anything on the side. With the old DOS keyboard, 
everything plugged in in the side over here, so you had to move your mouse mat a little ways away, and when you plugged in USB cables and stuff, you couldn't keep stuff really tight together. So I really, really respect that decision to do that. That was one of my biggest gripes with the old keyboard. That is just awesome. Thank you, DOS keyboard. Also, the volume knob feels like it's made out of metal too. I just, I love the feel of this keyboard. It's really hard in a video to, you know, articulate just how nice the design and the build quality is, but this thing is super, super solid in the entire surface is metal. One of the things I didn't necessarily like too much about the CM Storm Cooler Master keyboard is that only a portion of the surface was metal, but it was cool because it was removable and you could paint it and do stuff like that, but it looks like honestly you could remove this also. There's screws along the bottom. But this covers the entire surface and I think that's neat, but it does not have an integrated wrist rest. So if that's a deal breaker for you, this is not the keyboard for you. Now to give you a little size comparison, I'm gonna set it down next to the old keyboard. You can see it's actually slimmer than the old keyboard. The old keyboard is quite a bit thicker if you look at the side of that. They've actually slimmed it down and of course the old keyboard didn't have a metal surface. But other than that, they look like they have an identical footprint which is very, very minimalistic, very smooth, small bezel around the keyboard. So you don't take up any more desktop space than you need to. Now, if you set it next to the Cooler Master CM Storm keyboard, you can see just how much of a Goliath the CM Storm is. And they're both phenomenal keyboards. They both have great keys, great touch to them. But the DOS keyboard is definitely a smaller, more generic looking design, which honestly for me, I prefer that. Um, whereas the CM Storm is a little bit more of an in-your-face, crazy, you know, asymmetrical design. Another really awesome design change is that there's just a single USB plug-in. The old keyboard, it branched off to two separate USBs because one was for the internal hub and one was for the keyboard itself. So now you only take up a single USB when you plug it in. But realize that it is a fixed USB cable. It's attached permanently to the keyboard. It is long. It's a 6.6 .6 foot cable. Um, but the Cooler Master keyboard has a detachable cable, so you can you can literally change it out with any cable that you want. Which, if you know, if you're a designer and you're into fashion and stuff like that, and you need a 20 foot cable and you don't want to use an extension, you know, whatever, that might be you know another thing that you want to consider. But for me, it's a non-issue. Now, the thing I really, really, really love about these DOS keyboards is the key press on them is phenomenal. Uh, this has the Cherry MX Blue, so they're the clickies. You can really hear them, you know, it's like a typewriter. But you can type incredibly fast on these keyboards. The keys feel absolutely phenomenal. The surface of the keyboard feels great. And if you look at this just on build quality alone, like if you just pick up and you handle this keyboard, you immediately know it's a premium product. And with the end key rollover, that's awesome. That means you can pretty much just mash every key down on the keyboard and it'll register simultaneously. The old DOS keyboard, I can't remember, I think it was like six key rollover or something like that, but it meant you can only hold six keys simultaneously unless you plugged it into PS2, then you got end key rollover. So I like the idea that now through a single USB, you have the high speed hub capability, you have all the media keys separated out, and you have that end key rollover, which is something that's highly sought after by gamers and uh, you know really fast typers and programmers because you have really you, you use a lot of keys simultaneously especially when you're doing like video editing writing code and stuff like that it comes in handy and this keyboard has the cherry mx blue switches that you can just pull off here really easy i can also transfer over my colored keycaps you can see here like my green w and it's a good fit although you can see they've slightly changed the style of the keys so it's not completely smooth. So I'm gonna see if they've got colored keys in the new format. All right guys, now we have the DOS Keyboard 4 Professional hooked up and we're gonna do a little bit of type racer because at the end of the day, no matter how good a keyboard looks, it's only gonna work as good as it's gonna work. So let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go ahead and uh, start off with a practice here. So it's just gonna count down, three, two, one. In the air and deep beneath the rolling waves in lap. Oop. Prince of coral caves. I love these blue switches. They feel great. Distant tide comes willowing across the sand and everything is green and submarine. All right. That was only 101 words per minute. So that was a nice little introduction to the keyboard. So let's go ahead and enter some races because uh, having a little pressure sometimes can help things. All right, here we go. To an, outs to an outsider's ear, it sounds absurdly wild and ridiculous. What? Ridiculous to speak of the vocation of a thief. Who makes this shit up? However, 
I venture to assure you that this vocation is a reality. Not 80 words per minute. That was horrible. God, give me something I can type. What's with these words, guys? All right. At first, they had tried to keep the finding quiet. After all, they were not absolutely sure it was an extraterrestrial message. A premature or mistaken announcement would be a public relations disaster. But worse than that, it would interfere with the data analysis. If the press descended, the science would surely suffer. Ah, a little better. That was only 103 words per minute. Race again. All right. Get warmed up, guys. Get ready. Here we go. One. I can type a little bit faster when I don't have to like speak out the words as I go. Well guys, unfortunately being tired and sick has really affected my typing speed. I probably should have done this video a little earlier in the day, but you know, I've just been so busy. But uh, here I've got Notepad open right here in a big font, so let's go ahead and just type a couple of things here. Uh, maybe I'll just type my ending credits as we go. I'll just say, I think the DAS keyboard uh, for Professional is a great keyboard. I think it's stylish. I think it's easy to type on, even though I'm tired, I think I can still type pretty well on it. I think the build quality is epic, I like the metal top and where, and where the USB ports are located. I think it's a great design and everything feels fantastic, even the volume knob and the new media keys. I would have to say, if you are looking for a mean, slim, and professional keyboard to make your workstation, oops, not ought to dyslexia, make your workstation really pop, then this is your keyboard. As you guys can see, it works really, really well. The Cherry MX switches are awesome. The build quality is literally second to none, guys. I like the fact that they use this ruler. You actually have a, a ruler as your riser. And you don't have to use the riser if you don't want to. It stays put really, really well. Um, and compared to like the CM Storm keyboard, which we have right here, it's much, much smaller. Now, the things that you sacrifice is you don't have the macroing capability. You don't have the backlit LEDs. Uh, and of course you don't have the handle, which you need on a keyboard this big. Um, but if your space is limited and you want a keyboard that is just, I mean, I love the style on it. I love the symmetry. I love that you can put the mouse pad right up against it. It doesn't have a wrist rest. So both keyboards definitely have a place in my life. The Cooler Master keyboard has the macro and capability, which for gaming is going to be awesome. The backlit keys are awesome. I love the different backlit modes and stuff like that. So that keyboard is really, really cool. But the thing is, the DOS keyboard, just it takes me as a more professional keyboard. If you fancy yourself a professional, a software developer, a document writer, this is your keyboard. It just feels, it feels more solid. It feels more refined. It's got a smaller footprint. I like the way the keys feel better. Now, that's largely because of the MX switches, you know, browns versus blues. But even the keycaps, to me, feel a lot nicer. So, guys, at the end of the day, you'll have to make up your own decision. They are both fantastic keyboards, but the DOS keyboard is probably going to be my keyboard of choice for my desktop for the main machine. And then for the editing and streaming box, I'm going to use the Cooler Master because the macroing capabilities are going to help me out a lot in my video editing applications. Well, guys, that about does it. I'm sorry my typing speed wasn't up to snuff today, but I'm fighting a really nasty cold. Uh, this video was highly influenced by NyQuil. <laughs> So, uh, uh, that intro might have been a little bit weirder than usual. This is your guy right here, and I absolutely love it. 
Now, if you're a gamer and you really like the backlit keys and you like the macroing capabilities and stuff like that, then the CM Storm is a really, really good alternative. But for me, since I do mostly professional work on this thing and I game as second, this is probably going to be the keyboard that I use, which I think I already previously said. But again, guys, I'm sick. Cut me some slack. <laughs> Uh, but the CM Storm is going to go in the editing box because macroing capability is really, really cool. So I hope in the future that DOS Keyboard, as they continue to revise their design, that they may consider some things like macros. I think macros are really cool, but again, they take up space, right? You have to add additional keys. It makes the footprint larger, and that's undesirable uh, to people that have small workspaces or they want to keep a really clean and tidy workspace. But uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments down below. Come over and talk to me over on the old Twitter. I like it when people do the whole tweeting and the twit thing at me. So come and do that. Make it so. And I really hope you guys are enjoying these videos. And I am just completely astonished at just how good this keyboard is. And I hope you guys enjoy it yourself. If you guys go ahead and get one of these, please leave your comments. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I Honestly, I have a hard time finding any fault with this thing as a keyboard. This is just, this is just a thing of beauty. So guys, till next time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.